Hello, I'm Maria Granger. I'm a lecturer at Worcester College of Technology. This is my model, Gail, and Maria, my assistant. Today we're going to do um, a fashion perm um, using a piggyback wind. Um, on consultation, Gail's explained to us that um, really she wants a perm to give her extra bo body and texture um, rather than to just have it curly. So we've been through the initial consultation and we've um, discovered that Gail has got um, bleach towards the end of her hair. Um, the rest of her hair, there is no colour on it. So what we're going to do to start with is we're going to put a pre-perm treatment on the hair, which will even out the porosity um, of the hair, where these sections here are bleached. They are going to be a little bit more fragile um, than the rest of the hair. So first of all, we're just going to spray in a leave-in pre-perm treatment. This will bring the porosity of the hair into better condition. We've also discussed the type of perm lotion that we're going to use on Gail's hair. Um, we've decided that we're going to go with an acid perm. Because of the previous treatment of bleach that she's had on these sections, these sections of hair will be a lot weaker, even though we've applied a pre-perm solution to even out the porosity. An acid perm's pH value is between 6 and 7, so it is less damaging to the hair. How an acid perm works is, as it enters into the cortex of the hair, it starts to break down the hydrogen bonds and the disulfide bonds in the polypeptide chains in the hair. Because it's an acid perm and it is a lot gentler, fewer bonds are broken in the hair's cortex, so not so much damage happens to the hair. Now the actual wind of the hair. Um, because Gail wants um, lots of body and texture, we've decided to use a piggyback wind. This is very good for hair that has got long layers and that's one length. Because she only wants a very soft perm, the actual size of the curler that you need to use will also pay a, play a part. We've decided to use rods that are blue and red. We want to give a lot of body in the hair and we also want a little bit of curling which will help it last. Okay, now to the wind. I'm going to start with a very fine section of hair. Wind through, and wind down to the root. We are then going to take another fine section of hair and leave that one. And then behind the section that you've just left, take another section of hair and wind the curler into there. Once you've wound those two curlers in, pick up the section that you've left out. I have a red one now. Wind that down. As you can see, we have achieved a piggyback. We have two curlers sitting in at the root and one curler sitting on the back of those two curlers. You can use this wind for either sections of the hair 
or in, in today's case what we're going to do is we're just going to wind just below the crown area down into the lengths. As Gail has this style graduated into the neck we don't really want to put any curl in there because this is the area that she needs the body. So again the three curlers again wind through with your first curler take the section and leave it forward and then pop and then move through to the section that you've left out and wind that one down. And then we have the piggyback wind. It is important that these sections are very fine that you take. If you take them too thick, what will happen is these curlers will slot straight back in in between and you'll lose that desired effect. Again, make sure when you're winding your curls, your rods, that the hair is of an even tension, that it's, you don't pull too hard, otherwise you could cause discomfort to your client. As you come down the hair, you may find you may need to use a clip just to hold the section of hair up out of the way. As the style of the hair now is going to be graduated into the nape of the neck, I'm going to stop using a piggyback wind as I don't need added extra volume to come down into this section of the hair. So I'm just going to change my wind to a directional wind. you can see from there we have our piggyback wind. We have two rods sitting at the root and one sitting on the back of those. I'm going to follow this wind through the rest of the hair now. When we get to this section of hair here, as before on the back section, I said that I wasn't going to use a piggyback wind because I didn't need extra volume here. Because the hair is graduated down, um, I'm going to follow that same pattern through here, just a normal directional wind. So we have a piggyback wind around the head. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to apply um, the perm lotion. So remember your PPE and gown up. Okay, we're now going to apply barrier cream around the client's hairline, making sure that we don't apply any of the cream on the actual hair.
and then a slightly damp piece of cotton wool. Make sure when you use an acid that you mix it directly before you're going to use the lotion. An acid perm doesn't have a very long shelf life, so once you've opened it and activated it, you need to discard the lotion straight away. Always mix using manufacturer's requirements and use their development time as well. Okay. When you've activated your lotion, make sure each curler is saturated. Try not to squirt the lotion on in one go, because otherwise it will run and you may get it into clients' eyes. I recommend that you squirt the bottle over the head approximately three or four times, making sure you've covered each curler. And because this is a piggyback wind, you have to remember to lift up the curler that you've got placed on top of the others, making sure that each curler is covered. When you're satisfied that each curler has been saturated, process according to manufacturer's requirements. As I said earlier, most acid perms require heat. This perm doesn't. Thank you. The perm lotion will now start to enter through the cuticles of the hair, entering into the cortex where the polypeptide chains are held up by disulfide bonds and hydrogen bonds. The lotion will start to penetrate the disulfide bonds and the hair will start to mould into its new position. We'll then fix it together with the neutraliser, but for now we're just going to develop the hair. After neutralising the hair and removing the curlers, we used a conditioner to restore the hair's pH balance. As you can see, the, de the degree of curl that we have moving through the hair shows that there's going to be a lot of body and a lot of texture as we've got different size curls moving through. These sections of the hair where it was highly bleached, we used a pre perm treatment to even out the porosity of the hair which has kept the hair looking in, a good, in good condition. And then through the back when we use the wind we wound down to this section of the hair so when we blow dry we'll be able to see the graduation coming through. <laughs> 